it's good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we are going to learn how to hover over objects in a 3D website. For this walkthrough, we'll need a 3D scene. We will also need a JavaScript project using the 3JS library. This tutorial uses this project, available for free on GitHub, linked below. To review the code, I will be using the free editor called Visual Studio Code. A package manager is also necessary. This is used to quickly install the libraries needed for the project. I will be using the Node package manager, also called NPM. First, we can prepare our scene. In Blender, I will set some cards out on a table. If you want the code to know what kind of objects you are hovering over, you may want to name the objects here. I named my cards, so I know when they are being hovered over. When going to export, I also choose to include the camera and the lights. This way, I know where my camera will be in 3JS. Then, I make some final adjustments to the scene on 3JS.org slash editor. For more step-by-step -step details, I've linked a walkthrough below to bring a scene into a JavaScript project using 3JS. It's time to set up the demonstration project. The project here is available on GitHub. When the mouse hovers over an object with hard in its name, it will be flipped. Using your package manager, install the necessary libraries. With npm, you can open a terminal, then navigate to the directory with the package.json file and run the command npm install. If you're following along, make sure to paste your scenes file somewhere that the project can see it. The expected path will be found in mainview.js in the scene path variable. In mainview.js, we see the page this project built. We set up some variables, then we load the 3D file for the scene. Some code is used to use the camera in the scene as our 3JS camera. Now, we have the steps to hover over an object. First, we need to listen for when the mouse moves. Then, we get the position of the mouse in the browser. From that position, we can form array cast. This casts array and tells us what the mouse intersects. This provides a list. We can either take everything or just the first object. The event listener is added to listen for the mouse move. When the mouse moves, on mouse move starts. The method getMouseVector2 has formulas that describe the x and y positions of the mouse. Then, check ray intersections is called. This method holds the basic steps for getting the objects the mouse is hovering over. There's even a boolean value, getFirstValue. If set to true, it will return a list of only the first intersecting value. Otherwise, if something was under the table or below the floor, it may still be intersecting with the ray. Raycaster.set from camera will make sure the ray is coming from the camera through the mouse. Then raycaster.intersect objects will get every child for the supplied object that the ray touches and add it all to a list. To do this recursively and get grandchildren and every object within an object, you can set the second value to true. Now that we have a list of objects that the mouse is hovering over, we can trigger some action. The getCardObjects method will get all intersecting objects that have the word card in their name. Then, flip cards will invert the scale of any cards in the list, which visually flips them. To run the project, use the custom command npm run start dash dev. Two command prompt windows should open. This project uses a JavaScript tool called Webpack. It takes an extra moment to prepare and the output files are configured so that they may run faster when used on a public website. And look at that! Together, we have triggered an action when hovering over objects. Please, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day and thank you for attending class outside.